Now, getting closer to the end, uh, short information who I am. I'm Peter Gerber from Scheffler, I mentioned that morning. Um, why are we here today? Well, Rainer uh, invited us, because we are uh, a yeah, small group of people that try to help themselves with a topic, it's almost the same topic we heard in the speech before. Thank you very much for the introduction about problems you have when you try to develop a product, a complex system. So, so it's more technical issue. Well, hopefully, I was playing right to you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So uh, we have some issues developing a modern product. What I mean with a modern product? We talk about smart products. And when I think back about toys, well, the toys of my father, that was more a stick or a piece of wood. When I think about the toys where my uh, boy, my son, likes to play with, it's more technical stuff, yeah? Like a uh, yeah, drone or anything like that. Small things that you, uh, oh, it doesn't work at the moment. <laughs> the oh, so it's probably a configuration issue. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps one second. Perhaps. Yeah. No, no problem with the toy. Normally it should work. You see, if the software is not configured in the right way. <laughs> no, I guess now it will work. Um, yeah, from that point of view, give it some time, now okay. it starts. Small thing, but why do we show the small toy? Just a small toy, you can buy it everywhere. This toy is typical for the products we have today. Without the mechanical parts, it would not fly, it would not move at all. Without the electrical parts, no engine, nothing will move. And of course, without any software, yeah? Uh, you will have no chance to control it. So, an easy part, an easy toy, just a few euros, you can buy it everywhere. And not just for. Oh, let's check if it's connected. It also has a camera inside, yeah, so you all can be seen. Uh, this is the view of the drone, how the drone sees all of you. <laughs> yeah? Why do we play with this car, with this small tool? This is one thing I learned from my son. Because my son, um, just getting back to the presentation, my son likes to play. Why does he like to play? Because he learns when he plays. What do we want to do? We want to develop a complex system, a complex product, a mechatronic product, a smart product, containing hardware, software, means electrical parts, mechanical parts, software, and sometimes it could even be some hydraulic and other parts inside. Yeah, and what we try to learn is how can we develop such a part. We have many of the problems you mentioned before, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, how can we solve these problems? I already described the different disciplines. How do we work today? Today, everyone works in his silo everyone and everyone is concentrated only in the silo and talking to the other guys makes no sense because you cannot understand the other guys they speak in a complete different language even the methods how they work are complete different this is a huge problem we have today the huge problem because uh, also already the universities are not connecting the different disciplines yeah we have different faculties concentrating on software, software ITs, their own faculty. And why should IT talk to mechanic? Of course, I'm pointing a little bit <coughs> out the problem. Yeah, and the electric guys are completely different than the mechanical guys. Of course, there are some small, yeah, there's some small collaboration starting today, but the methods are still completely different. And we try to bring the data together today. Data of different languages, words that do not fit together. There's no common understanding. So this is a huge problem. But 
the tools I mentioned before and the, the results and the, uh, and the products, they exist already today. Why have, well, why, how can we develop these kind of programs? Today, of course, these products are developed with a lot of iteration loops in optimization and finding out all the problems. Many of the problems are found during the life cycle and afterwards, so maintenance uh, and so on is very important. But when you want to develop a product in the future, first time right, you have to think much more about the whole architecture. And there's also one experience I see from our company. Um, in the past, the mechanical guys were designing a system and at the end, the software guys, uh, guys came in and they were allowed to say what they can add and so they tried to solve the rest. Today it turned over, now the software guys try to develop the whole product and the mechanical try, uh, guys try to save the rest, even not better. What is missing? The new discipline system architecture. This system, uh, this uh, new discipline does not exist at the moment from my point of view. Yeah, There are some guys from software moving to a system or from mechanical, but they are still from their domain, from their specific side. How we work together, we throw the results over the fence, hoping that anyone could react somehow on what we give to them. And no matter where you throw it, from software to mechanic, or from mechanic to software, or to the electronic guys, or to the requirements management guys, or anywhere else, there's always someone sitting there saying, oh, I received a file, what should I do with that file? So this is the big question. What we try to solve is, yeah, we want to get to a solution where we have a connected world, a linked world, where they can work together, where they do not ever get no information just when it's already gone, and I just receive the results and have to yeah, accept them or handle them anyhow. I want to get an early information about planned change. I want to get the information right when the change happens on the software side, I from the mechanical side want to get the information in time. And in some cases, I cannot split a change request to, oh, this is just for the software side and this is just for the mechanical side. To find the optimized solution, I need both of them at the same time working on the same change request. Two guys that cannot speak together, that have no common language, try to speak together, try to solve anything together. Yeah, very nice today, but this happens day by day. So, as I mentioned before, we came together as a group of people that have the same problem, we try to find a solution, and we try to find the solution by playing. Playing the game with toys, <laughs> or anything like that, but the real product. The problem is, when we try to talk about our products, then we have a lot of problems with <laughs> intellectual property and so on. So we cannot talk about our own products. So we decided to find a common product where we go through the different methods, go through the different processes, try to find a solution or try to find, first of all, the requirements of a linked solution. What do we really need from the other side? Yeah? If the software guys say, oh, this is our result and we, give, we handle this over, we give this to our mechanical guys, they are happy that, okay, what should I do with that? Okay, put it to the corner. When I don't think I will need it, then I'll take it again. That makes no sense. We have to give the information the other uh, discipline really needs. This is what we have to concentrate. And what we see today is that this is not defined. We have no processes on that level that say, this are the informations that are needed at that time. So we build links, but we do not know what to link. Hmm. So how we sort of try to solve the problem is, we have some key, uh, key objectives. First of all, our key uh, principles are for our own. We try to find out solutions for real use cases from the industry. And the typical use case is the change or the optimization of a complex product of a complex mechatronic product. Yeah, no theory, a real product that you can yeah, take into your hand and yeah, that you can understand and where you can see what you're doing. Um, what we've done, we defined a process uh, and the funny thing for me was even if there were different companies working together, the common understanding of this change process 
was very similar and we came together to an overall process very soon and we follow this process along the different roles we have in this process. Of course there are some differences in each company but these differences are in detail. Uh, for example, who may release anything or things like that, but you need a change manager, you need someone who's responsible for mechanics, someone who's responsible for software and so on. So we have typical roles that are everywhere. And uh, yeah, we define their activities, we define their artifacts that normally exist, and of course the relationships and the capabilities. Yeah, and for us, important, we try to solve everything with new technologies like OSLC. Okay, OSLC is not that brand new anymore. Hopefully it gets better day by day. Um, but we try to follow a linked solution with federated system. No huge mon monolithic system approach. We have different systems in our mind and try to have this linked solution overall. Yeah. But, as I said before, no theory. What we are doing is, we say, we build up this example with the existing tools that we find on the market. And I want to add one more thing. Yeah, I guess it was you, Mr. I heard told that morning. Uh, SysML 2.0, just a small add from my point. I'm also the uh, chairman of the SysML Workflow Forum, <laughs> you know that? And from that point, uh, we have this forum that was founded because there are many companies that want to use SysML as the central model of the architecture. But today we cannot use this central architecture, which is also very important as a central function of uh, the whole links to all the other disciplines, uh, connected perhaps with OSLC, of course. But as long as there, we, as we cannot work there in the right way, as long as we do not have a solution for SysML, we have a big problem. But waiting for a SysML 2.0, 3.0, and it will come in in five or ten years. Sorry, the industry has no time anymore to wait. We have to solve our problems right now. And so we come together and try to solve with the existing tools, with the existing definitions, what we can do. And if we find out that SysML does not work, perhaps we have to move in another way, in a, to another direction. But we cannot wait anymore. The customers want to have the products. And it's the same here, coming back to CDLC, first <laughs> discipline lifecycle collaboration. We need a solution to solve our problems of product development today. And how we do that, that Christian will show it to you. So, yeah. So, also, thank you. Welcome from my side to the status presentation of the CDLC working group. Um, first of all, let me introduce you to our demonstrator cases. You can see here Master Rover and SUV ADO system. Um, together with our participating vendors, which are at the moment Aris, Contact, PTC, IBM, and the SO system, and also SAP, which is at the moment to be considered. We try to prove the feasibility of the cross-discipline operability through such demonstrators. And therefore, we want to show um, cross-discipline engineering change and cross-discipline engineering change implementation. And we also want to show that the process of forward and backward traceability is possible. So what do I mean with forward traceability? Let's assume that we have, let's say, a requirements change then we want to see um, which artifacts or which systems of our overall systems are affected by that requirements change. And backward traceability means, <coughs> let's assume that the system fails, then we also want to know which systems or which artifacts <coughs> in, our, in our overall system are affected by that failure. And because that comes more or less, uh, let's say, bottom up, then it's called the backward traceability. And therefore, we have uh, two use cases considered for these demonstrators. First, as you can see here, uh, a small Mars rover. Here we want to increase the autonomy range of this jet propulsion uh, laboratory Mars rover, which is an open source project. And the second use case is the upgrade of a um, hybrid SUV model from ACC automatic cruise control to autonomous driving ADAS system. At the moment, the majority is focusing here on this Mars rover. And I think in the beginning of 2009, we will also take this use case into account. So therefore, let me tell you a bit more about this um, Mars rover design. 
first of all, as I said, it's an open source project and open source design which is uh, provided by the NASA JPL via GitHub. And it's intended for university or college students to build up their own hardware, to set up their own real Mars rover. So therefore, there is a really detailed instruction how to build up things, how to manufacture things. Um, there are CAD models inside provided via step format. There's even a shopping list where you can buy several parts in the US. And there's also included software for uh, a mobile device where you can, so you can operate your rover, so you can really control your rover via the, the mobile phone. And there's also a detailed instruction how to set up the electronics. But for our use case, we need a bit more. So therefore, this data set is currently enriched by, let's say, a requirements breakdown because as far as I know at the moment in the big project, there are no requirements for this robot because you don't really need them. But for our use case, we need the requirements. Further, we need a system L model. At the moment, we just have, let's say, a top level system L model where we go not deep, much deeper into detail than here's some components like the wheels, the motors, or the electronic boards. But for our demonstrator at the moment, we don't need much more detail. But what is also important is mechanical 3D models, electronics design, software design, EBOM, AMBOM process flow because as said before, um, we want to link these objects. So we need them um, enriched in this model to really can create, that we can create these links. So hope it's the right direction. Yeah. And here are some examples for this data linking. As you can see here, um, you have this cross discipline coordination level, here at the top level where we have EBAM product tree, or on the other side, a master change request or master change order, and you have here vertically uh, the linking product and the process data, so you can see the, you can do a change impact analysis, and here you have more or less the coordination part, so that for the task coordination. And you start here at the cross-discipline coordination level, and then really drill down or dive into the technical disciplines. So like requirements, software architecture, MCAT, MCAT, and you can here try to navigate and identify the change impacts. And you can do this via links, and you have also links between this object. So that's, it does not mean that here MCAT and ECAT and software are not linked together. So you also have these links top from top down, and you also have interconnections. And you also want to have this for your master change request or your master change order. So you have these links down, and you also have the links between the different um, sub-change requests between, let's say, software or MCAT or ECAT. And what is also important, that you can come back, and then you can visualize the status of your sub or sub -zero. So therefore, we yeah, set up some kind of storyboard where we said, OK, we want to have this whole change process. So therefore, let's assume uh, we want to increase the, uh, the range of the robot by, let's say, 5 or 10%. So then you start with a change inquiry. Let's say it comes from the sales. Then you have um, a rough analysis, impact analysis, cost analysis. And then you start at the coordination <coughs> level with your uh, master change request. And then you really dive down into the technical disciplines with your uh, step change request where you have let's say first draft solution where you have an impact analysis and then you visualize you can visualize the status of your CRs uh, sub CRs and then come back again to this coordination level let's say we have them approved and then we start with the implementation so we create our master change order and then again dive into the technical disciplines where you where we produce our sub change orders where we start with testing uh, with simulation where we have our draft designs or um, our software designs, software uh, solutions. And then we come back again, find out if our requirements are met. So we have a requirements check and we update our BOM, our ERP system, and then we start with a uh, physical implementation. And then more or less our change process is closed. And as I said, um, we want to have on these demonstrators and we want to have this federated architecture where these different tools work together. Um, therefore, let me show you uh, how this architecture could look like. You see here enterprise change management, requirements, software, hardware, manufacturing, system verifications. And as you can see here, um, per domain, we have at least two tools because we, don't, we want to show that this process is really 
tool independent, so that's really a process because we don't want to say, okay, this solution, this monolithic solution is the best solution, so it's better than everything else. Therefore, also we have uh, different vendors and different demonstrators so that you can see that it is possible with different tools and that's, that is really a process that is, that is working and not that it's just some tool chain that is working. And therefore, we also have the idea um, at certain important points within this storyboard or within this process flow that our vendors and our demonstrators have, let's say, some points where they uh, can produce videos so that you can really see how the <coughs> demonstrator work in a certain position, how it solves a certain problem that you can, that also the user can experience how um, such a problem can overcome. Unfortunately, it's so right. Uh, unfortunately, these videos are not ready yet, but I can show you the first outcome of the RS demonstrator. Um, here you see the home screen. I think most of the tools will have a home screen, so we can start navigating where you get an overview of your project, of your roles. And then, as I said, in this um, uh, overall flow, we start with the master change process, where you start these master change requests, and then go down here in EBOM MCAT model, and you see that here at the bottom already there is a linking between the, the model and the bond structure. And hopefully, um, I'll bring you to the next slide, hopefully these videos will be ready end, uh, mid, end of this year, mid next year. Um, here are our next steps. As you can see, we started in 2017 with vision and scoping, then best practices, requirements, use cases, demonstrator preparation, <coughs> We started in 2018, at the moment we're here, so we have our first version till end of 2018 and till mid of 2019 we'll have, we'll have the demonstrator extensions, fund recommendations and also these videos ready that we can include them in the whole storyboard. And I think the rest of 2019 is for our spirit for documentation or maybe some yeah, final adaptions to the Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for the details. Um, first of all, I want to uh, add, I'm very happy that we have so much support from the tool vendors. You saw many, many different logos of the different tool vendors on the slides. Without their uh, help, we would not manage anything. But they recognized what we plan to do. They gave us the feedback. It's important for them to understand what the business side wants to have or wants to yeah, use an, as an integration in the future. So it's an important feedback to them. That was the feedback that we became. And for us, it's very helpful to play with the existing tools, with the existing solutions, of course, with the latest versions. And for the tool vendors, it's of course, the chance to show what they already provide, what they already uh, offer. Of course, for us, good to have. One more time. Our goal is to uh, have a scenario with linked solutions, federated architecture. That's very important for me. A consistent demonstrator covering our use cases. A realistic use case, not a theoretical scenario. Um, the next point, very important for me. No claim to solve all the problems of the world. We cannot do that within a short time. We try to get some rubber on the road. We try to move forward. And we can't just solve some of the problems that we see. This is also no scientific, uh, great new work. We don't want to develop anything brand new. We try to take what exists and put that into action. We try to use the existing solutions. I will not solve everything. Yeah, and I come to come to the end. We're an open community. Everyone is welcome to join. We're happy to get uh, input from any side. Yeah, we have a, have, uh, a lot of uh, companies from the consultant side, from the vendor side, and of course from the user side. And it's important to come together and to find solutions. And from that point, you're all invited. And thank you very much. And yeah, now we're here for your questions. business
business uh, model or business consideration, how much money you could save by doing that? Because that's that's the obvious question that we discussed in the morning already. So if you want to, to be, to be honest, at, at the moment I'm happy if this would work. Okay. When I think about the license models that existing, okay. then I would not prefer any link solution because at any time when I follow a link and I have to, uh, uh, I, I need the license from the existing system, then each guy that works anywhere in the uh, project takes any kind of license and as long as we have license models like this, no company will be able to pay it. And I think within the project, I think in the middle of the next year, we have uh, to discuss the license uh, problems. Because at the moment, first of all, we have a focus what works from a technical focus and how the idle process will work. But when I think about the costs at the end, the licenses, that will be another discussion. So, I, I'm a bit. So I have two questions. One, um, what companies are specifically interested in this collaboration project? And the second question is, vendors have promised a lot in the past, <laughs> and so I'm a bit pessimistic as to like the goals are perfect, but will they really, you know, c create something that's going to change how the things are now? Yeah. These are the. Uh, companies that are working on the project. Oh, yeah, this one's okay. yeah, so first of all, we have Daimler, Scheffler, Salaf, and Continental uh, who are uh, at the moment uh, yeah, going ahead. Uh, but I know from many other companies that are follower. Mm -hmm. yeah, but these are the companies that work on the solution at the moment. Uh, on the other hand, I 100% agree. I'm also rid of nice presentations from our vendors. That's the reason why I say, Please install your software solutions, but we say how the use case looks like. We say how the product looks like. Here's the data, build it in your system and show us in the system. The reason why we make videos is um, having a linked scenario through five, six, seven, eight system is not so easy to show. So at the end, we want to make the uh, videos just to show how it works, but we in the team we want to see how it really works in the system. No high class show on the video screen. We want to see it in the system, and this is why, how we will discuss with the on the way how we will discuss with the toolbars. I know the high class presentations. <laughs> yeah. Um, one question that I see here from from the vendor side: it's uh, most of the vendors uh, they are don't support versioning links, is that a problem for the, for the demonstration approach or it's not in a focus currently? At the moment it's not in the, that focus, but... Okay, we'll so first solve the problem, then... <laughs> yeah, one, one step after the other. <laughs> yeah? Are you uh, using OSLC for all of the traceability across the vendor? At the moment we say we want to have a link to uh, you know, IBM, of course, uh, says we will have OSLC, also PTC is uh, following OSLC, but not for all kinds of connectors. Yeah? So, in some cases we have OSLC, in some cases we will have other solutions. It's also one point that we want to see what technology is used. Uh, that's the reason why you found on one of the slides, like OSLC. For me, first of all, as on the user side, it's important to have a link solution. Yeah? Which standard we use at the end? As long as it works, I'm fine with that. Yeah? Let's say in that way. Um, the tool vendors, they um, they gave us um, uh, yeah, cloud versions of their commercial of the shelf, the uh, original software without any adaption. This is what they say. <coughs> With a short time we give to them, when they just programming anything for us in the background to show us then, okay, we're not 100% sure that they don't do that. Yeah? We cannot avoid. But if it's that easy to fulfill our requirements, good. then it's good. <laughs> yeah. 
More questions? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you very much. Thank you.